Your Honor, at this time we're going to play Exhibit 243, the second interview of Alec Murdoch. Call really yes, quick. Sir, this right is here. my sister-in-law, yes, and she's trying to. Hey, Mary. <laughs> okay, man. I'm meeting with law. En I mean, Mary. When I meet with law enforcement, so I'll call you in just a minute. Thank you. Don't have a card. That's fine. Did, che did Chelsea call you? Okay. Okay. Can you let Chelsea know and then make her run Lynn down? Okay, well, tell her to go get Christy to find Lynn. Get any one of the secretaries to find her. All right. Thank you. Sorry to put that on you. Bye. No, sorry. Um, one thing I want to do before we start is I'd like to get a cell phone exam so we can just corroborate everything. <laughs> Um, let me get a consent, and I got a guy here that's going to do it. Are you going to download it now? Yes, sir. Okay, great. So I'll get to keep my phone? Yes, sir. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Who was the guy that was there to download Alex's phone? Do you remember? Uh, Dylan Hightower with the 14th Circuit Solicitor's Office. He works with the 14th Circuit Solicitor's Office? That is correct. At that point in time, that was the prosecutor's office in charge of the case? That is correct. Not until August that the case got sent to the uh, Attorney General's office? That is correct. What, how much attorney-client privilege stuff is on there? A lot. Okay. We do have a taint attorney that's going to examine it before we ever do. What is a taint attorney? A, a taint attorney. They look at somebody who's not affiliated with the case that makes sure that there's, Jim, do you know, yes, can you sure. explain it better? Sure, sure. And I, I mean, it's a privileged attorney that, that doesn't. If there is attorney-client privilege information, it's, it's redacted or, or extracted by the attained attorney. How do they know who's the client? I know. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. It, I, yeah. You know what? But If y'all get some attorney-client stuff. That is, it, you know, would go through me. And so, signature. Um, just write your name here. So, Alec, I've had situations where. It's say, not a big deal. Give me a list of all his clients or something like that, you know. But for oh, a lot of rest. <laughs> you know, I, I think the big thing, Joe, is, I mean, when you download that phone, if, I don't know if emails come with it or not, because that's probably where all this attorney client privilege stuff. And we can, I, and we can actually isolate the, the, um, the emails. Yeah, that's probably. So you don't text my e clients, but no, I do. T I text a lot of clients. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm not a big emailer. Is that at 11 or 12, or do you know? I do not know. Okay. My, my case. I can tell you that the case story if you want me to look at the back. You should have a number. Give me a shot of light And what was your date of birth again, Mr. Murray? 2768. Yeah. And the last word is social. Get old. Um, <laughs> seven. You got the last. Seven four eight three. I'm sorry. That's all right. Uh, doesn't say anything on it. The most of the new ones don't. Probably have to open it up. Oh well, this guy. Jim, you want to witness that for me, please? <clears throat> And if you got a passcode or it, my passcode is so write it on there. Just start at the bottom nine, go up nine six six nine. Nine six six nine. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, let me run this till my right back.
Where are you from, sir? I'm actually from Barnwell. Oh, yeah? Yes, sir. I got some cousins in Barnwell. I got people in Barnwell, too. Mixon. Um, Mixon all? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah that was my... Uh, you came to Dickie Mixon? I don't know. You know, that... Uh, <laughs> Mixon all my Uncle Ray Mixon and his son Teddy and Bobby and a bunch of them. And then um, you know, Freddie Mixon. He was oh, I knew Freddie Mixon very well. Yeah, and, and his wife Etta and Jill. Goes, cousin. Mr. Freddie uh, goes to uh, Elko Church. Yeah, not anymore. He's dead. I mean, he went. Well, he did. Yeah. Well, you know, I was at his funeral. He had a <clears throat> Tiger Paul casket at the funeral. <laughs> Clemson guy. You know Big John Beddingfield, don't you? Oh, I, yeah. Oh, I know John. That's my cousin. Okay. Who was he just talking about right there? John Beddingfield, the DNR officer who is also the one that built the uh, the AR style rifles 300 blackout for him. Right. In Sweet Caroline? John's uh, son and my son are the same age. They were in school together. So, did you grow up in Barnes? Yes, sir. So he's got it and he's taking care of that. But I get it back. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> All right, sir. Um, so when we spoke the other night, I got kind of a basic overview. Yes, sir. Um, and it was pretty traumatic. That's okay. Um, yeah. I, I know so, you yeah. need to ask me. You ask me what you need to. So I just I, I want you to let's start Monday morning and, and take me through your day. Monday morning, uh, you know, did I do Monday morning? Um, my wife and my older son had gone to the baseball games that weekend. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, I, I really can't remember what I did Monday. I know I went to work, okay. but you know, I think I was dragging a little bit from the weekend, mm -hmm. and but I went to work. Um, I usually mess around on my farm, and then I go to work. Um, I was at work. Uh -huh. um, you know, Is that office in Hampton, or yes, sir, okay. yes, sir. So I was at my office in Hampton. Um, uh, you know, I mean, I was just at my office doing legal work. Yes, sir. I'm sure I can go back and probably recreate some specifics mm -hmm. if you need me to, but I can't like sit here and recall on the top of my head exactly mm -hmm. what I was working on. I know one thing I was working on. Um, was we had some we had some big motions coming up in a um, Dominion Energy case. I was getting ready for those, and uh, I was getting ready for some motions. I'm a defendant in a civil case involving my son. I told you about mm -hmm. the boat wreck. Yes, sir. And there were some motions coming up in that on Thursday, and I was mostly just getting ready for those things. Okay. And then this was in response to a question as to what he was doing the day of the murders. That is correct. Yes, sir. And he said he was working on some motions in the Dominion Energy case, and then also where he's a personally a defendant in the boat case. Is that correct? That is correct. And that's yes, what sir. he said he was doing the day of the murders. Is that right? That is correct. Yes, sir. Thank you. Other jump. Uh, what time did you leave the house to go to the office? I'm not sure. Uh, okay. Who who all was at the house when you left? To go to my office yes, that sir. morning. Or when you got up, who was at the house? I'm sure my wife was, um, and I can't remember if Blanca had made it out there yet or not. And who is Blanca? Blanca is our housekeeper. Okay, okay. And she comes mm -hmm. different. She doesn't have set hours, but she comes most days. Um, she'll be able to tell you if I yeah. was there when when I when she left or not. Okay. I, I just I can't remember. And so you you went to the office. You did. You know, some motions. Uh, what time did you leave the office? Real quick, what was the name of the housekeeper? Blanca. Yeah. When, when, I, when she left or not, okay. I, I just I can't remember. And so you, you went to the office, you did, you know, some motions. Uh, what time did you leave the office? I left a little bit earlier than normal because my son Paul was coming home. Okay. Um, because he had not been with us uh, during the weekend and he was coming home. We were going to um, we were going to replant some sunflowers the next day, okay. and so he was calibrating, doing, and getting everything ready. Um, so he got home a little early. I left a little early, so he and I 
could knock around and we knocked around for, you know, just doing things we like to do out there. Okay. You know, we're riding around looking at, um, um, food plots, looking, you know, look, looking for hogs, a little bit of target shooting, just bullshit. Yeah. You said Paul wasn't with you over the weekend. Where does he does he live with you at the house on Moselle? Well, I mean that's his home, but yeah. he has an apartment in Columbia. Okay. Um, and he goes to Charleston a lot of weekends with his buddies. Okay. And and he had been in Charleston for the weekend. Okay. And then Paul works for my brother John. Mm -hmm. out here. You met John. Yes, sir. So Paul works for him. So Paul. Uh, decided to go to, he went to spend a night with my brother, his uncle John. They were very, very close. Okay. Um, Sunday night. Okay. And then he worked for John Marvin and he came home Monday afternoon. Okay. Just real quick, uh, Alec Murdoch told you that he left work a little earlier than normal, is that correct? Yes, sir, that's what he said. And one of the things he told you is they were riding around looking for hogs, is that right? Looking for hogs, yes, sir. Do people often use 300 blackout to shoot hogs? They do. About roughly what time in the afternoon? You know, I would think it would be somewhere in the 5 o'clock range, a little bit. It was, it was broad daylight when we were, it wasn't dusk, dark, or late. Okay. You know, and we rode... Uh, you know, we just rode around. We rode around our dove field looking at how the corn was doing. He, he, had, um, he and I had planted corn in the dove field, and he planted the corn in the duck pond, and he was, you know, showing me how much better his corn was doing than mine was. <laughs> and um, we rode around the duck pond. I mean, we just, you know, we rode the property. Yes, sir. You know, we just, we rode the property. Um, then, you know, I mean, we, we rode around so much, um, we just rode, okay. uh, probably, uh, we, uh, it was a yeah. good little while. It was yeah. more than 20 minutes yeah. or 30 minutes, okay. and you know, was it two hours? I don't know. I'd say it was more than an hour, probably. It really wasn't keeping track of time. Uh, and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't getting dark. Mama wasn't home yet. She had gone to a doctor's appointment. Um, so, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> just out of curiosity, target practice, what don't shoot? Uh, just a little bottle. You give me what gun? Yeah. A 22 okay. Magnum. Rat shot. I think, no, it wasn't yeah. rat shot. I think he shot, I think he shot two times and I shot one time. Okay. shot just a couple of times the target shooting at a bottle uh, 22 magnum is that correct that is correct and uh, is 22 magnum is that a very small round or is that a a much larger rifle round like 300 blackout that is a small round 22 is about as small as it comes but it, they make them smaller but that it is small okay so after y'all got finished riding around and try to take me through the rest of the evening all right, um, you know, at some point we were all back at the house together. Mm -hmm. um, Maggie had gotten home and, you know, we sat down and we ate supper, which we usually eat supper together. Um, so um, the one thing I remember, I don't know how much detail y'all want, so if I start talking about something that you don't need, just tell me and I'll move to something else. The, the more detail, the better, sir. So Paul has been having... Um, high blood pressure mm -hmm. and his mama was worried sick about it so we were actually you know this was a, a direct thing getting him he doesn't like to go to doctors making him go get his blood pressure checked his feet had swollen up recently wow. so you know that was it, it was, a, it was a, a, a big huge deal okay. uh, you know we hung around the house for a little while uh, I know that Maggie went to the kennels. Um, I don't know exactly where Paul went, but he left the house too. Okay. How did Maggie get down to the kennels? I don't know exactly. 
but on normal occasions she would drive, drive a buggy, drive a four wheeler, or very common for her to walk. Okay. How about Paul? What's Paul wasn't much of a walker, but he would use all of the others. Okay. Um, but it, it, I mean, it could be anyway. Okay. You know, I, I don't know exactly. <clears throat> I wish I could help you with that. So, so they left and went down to the kennels. Well, Maggie went to go to the kennels. Okay. Paul and Paul left. And I'm assuming, you know, I'm assuming Paul left okay. because of, you know, gotcha. what happened. I mean, I'm assuming Paul yeah, yeah. went to the kennels. Okay. Um, and what did you do when, once Maggie and Paul left? I stayed in the house. What did he tell you he did after Maggie and Paul went to the kennels? He stayed in the house. I mean, I'm assuming Paul yeah, yeah. went to the kennels. Okay. Um, and what did you do when, once Maggie and Paul left? I stayed in the house. Okay. And I was watching TV, looking at my phone, and I actually fell asleep on the couch. Okay. And what time did you? You know, I don't know wake up? exactly what time I woke up, but when y'all get my phone. You know, I think one of the first things I did when I got up was call Maggie mm -hmm. because I was going to my mom's. Mm -hmm. um, and I know I texted her because I checked my phone. And what time did we say the text was, Jim? Like 9.06? I, don't, I didn't see it. Yeah, I, I got it written down from the other I night. I showed you the other yes, night, yes, didn't I? Yes, sir, I got this. So, you know, I texted her. So I called her just before that. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, she, she did an answer at that point. Um, and I left to go to my mom's okay y'all just have to look i, I don't yeah. i'm not sure if i called paul well or and, and that and that's why we're getting the phone so we can nail down the times and right. and, and everything so um, i left I drove uh well you know i'm gonna tell y'all this even though i think it's kind of crazy you know i was certain that i heard them pull up i mean i was positive that i heard and, and people don't just come out there. You know, we don't get like passed through. I was certain that I heard them pull up, but I, but they didn't. Okay. Um, the defendant told you that he thought he heard somebody pull up, but they didn't? Yes, sir. And that was before, according to him, he left the house. Is that correct? That is correct. Well, if, if you heard something pull up, what did it sound like? You know, I, I, I don't, I can't tell you what it sounded like. I just know that I thought they, I thought that that my wife had pulled up or I mean, that Paul it, had pulled up. Would it would it have been the buggy that she normally drives or would it be a car? No, no, I I, I had the impression that a, that a, a car pulled up. Okay. You know? And, and had you woken up by that time but hadn't left for your mom's? Yep. Okay. And, and but it wasn't much time in between there because mm -hmm. I left pretty damn close. It wasn't much time between me waking up and me leaving the house. Okay. Um, And when I went outside, you know, there, there's a cat, a wild cat that lives around that house. Okay. I'm pretty sure it was the cat that ran okay. from my car, but you know, I never had the impression it was a person, but there was something, Okay. you know? At this point, the defendant tells you something about a wild cat running, but he wasn't sure if it was a person. Yes, sir, that's what he says. Uh, but I really don't think, you know, I'm just throwing that yeah, out no, there no, because it was in my mind. Yeah, no, that's fine. All that's, right. that's totally fine. I left, I drove to, I drove to my mom's. Um, I she, checked on my mom. She lives mom. right out here, she correct? Li she lives at Almeda. Okay. Checked on my mom, talked with Shelly for a few minutes, you know. So um, Shelly is? The caregiver. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and, um, you know, I know that I called some people on the way that I know I returned a call from my brother, John. Um, I know that I called Chris Wilson. Um, I know that I talked to Buster. Um, so I made a few phone calls okay. and where was Buster? 
Buster was in Rockville. Okay. Is that where he lives or? No, he lives in Columbia, but he just started a new job. He He's going back to law school in January. Okay. So he's working a little part-time job um, with Wild Wings okay. uh, through January. Gotcha. You know, just kind of killing time. And he was in, um, his girlfriend lives in Rock Hill. She's studying for the bar exam. So he had to be in Charlotte. So he was staying with her in Rock Hill, her okay. and her mom. Okay. Can I open this yes, door? Yes, sir. <clears throat> so all right so where are we all right so you, then you, you i left your mom's, mom's and making phone calls i left my mom's and i uh, i went back home i got to the house uh, i went inside nobody was there i got in the car i went back to the kennels and you know and you, when you went back to the kennels, besides Maggie and Paul, did you see anybody, any cars? I didn't see take, anything take right then, no, sir. Take your time. You know, I saw Maggie and I saw Paul laying down. I knew, you know, I didn't know, you know, I, I knew it was bad. I went over there and, you know, I saw it. Yeah. And, you know, I called 911. And yeah, what what made you decide to go back to the house and get a gun? Yeah, I, I, I just think the whole scene had me freaked out. Okay. Did you you take your car back up there, or did you run up there? No, I drove. Okay. How did Alec Murdoch say he went back to the house after finding Maggie and Paul to go to supposedly go get a gun? He drove. <laughs> And, of course, the shotgun that we have is the one you brought back. They were asking me earlier. I'm not sure which one it was. <clears throat> Jim, it was a 12-gauge. I know 12. Um, yeah, Ronnie had the question. If it was 12 or 20, it was a 12-gauge. And it was that camo, though, right? Yes, sir. I think it was the uh, 12 um, camo Benelli. 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 I think so. <clears throat> but that's about all you got, Benelli out there, right? And, and we talked about this a little bit the other night, too. I, I know Paul had been getting some threats and getting some, some being, and being assaulted from, you know, the boat. Who, who stands out in your mind, besi besides the boat incident, who stands out in your mind that would want to come after, after Paul and or Maggie? I mean, sir, I can't think of anybody who would want to go to that extreme, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, he got a bunch of threats, mostly from, you know, uh, I mean, I have no idea. How would he receive most of those threats? What do you mean? I mean, would, would people call and hang up on them or no, send them texts no, or it wasn't social so much media? That. No, it was, it was mostly like in-person confrontations are the ones that I learned about. Now, I suspect his friends can probably tell you about mm -hmm. more because I doubt Paul told me about all of them. Okay. But I knew about a lot of them. You know, there were a lot of times where people would come up to him and he'd be like, they'd say something about, you know, you're going to tell me who was driving that boat or you, you little piece of shit were you driving that boat you know stuff like that okay <sighs> who did he go to charleston with in the boat that weekend i don't know exactly i know that uh i mean i know who his buddies are but specifically who was on the boat with him i'm not sure okay you know but i can give you a list of names of who it probably was so Joe, I don't know if you want me to weigh in here. You may want to put your pens down, but um, a good buddy of mine, son, went fishing with me yesterday out in the ocean, and he has a best friend, and his dad's name is Lee Chapman. But yeah, the, the kid said, Lee's son said that Paul slept on his couch in Charleston two nights before he was murdered. So it's, it's Lee Chapman's son. I can get his name. He 
you probably know the Legion Police son. I don't know, but, but he goes to the Citadel. But that's where Paul was. Okay. And I learned that yesterday out on the fishing trip, which is by half the standard. Look cool. I mean, yes, sir. If you could get me Lee Chapman's son's contact right. information. He, there was a bunch of Chapman <clears throat> cousins that Paul was very close with. The closest one being Wills Chapman and Frank that's Chapman. Wills Chapman is his name, but I'll, I'll, I'll get your number for him. Frank is John Chapman's son, and Wills is Lee Chapman's son. Yeah, okay. That's where you want. And those boys are, you know, they're just really good boys and friends of Paul's. And one of them is Wills with an S, right? That's right. right. And Wills goes to the Citadel, which you understand? No, he's graduated from he gra the Citadel. Graduated, graduated from the Citadel. Okay. And Frank was in the Citadel, but I think he had some kind of, you know, okay. academic troubles. But I, I, I mean, I, I'm telling you now, mm -hmm. I can promise you that, I mean, those boys love Paul. Well, it's, it's none of, it's absolutely. Well, you know, and I, I, I just want them. to talk to them about their weekend. And, sure. Yeah. Um, I can tell you this, in riding around with Paul, he was his normal bright, you know, just, he was a really great kid. Yeah. So, being a dad myself, what was the biggest issue you had with Paul when you had when you had to call him down and, and scold him or correct him? What was the biggest issue you had with Paul? You know, uh, I mean, I, irresponsibility. You know, um, he was ADHD. He was bad about jumping from. And he had so many wonderful qualities now, mm -hmm. but he was bad about jumping from, he'd start this, maybe not quite finish it, move, do something else. And, you know, you'll find out from his friends, he had clothes strung out all over the state. He did that with clothes. He did that with guns. He did that with my boats. Awesome. So. He lost what? He, he would misplace stuff. Or okay. Just, you know, leave stuff behind, right? Yes, everywhere, everywhere. I mean, he would go off for the weekend. Sometimes he wouldn't pack clothes because he's got clothes in somebody's house. I mean, Paul, Paul was one. He, like, he, he wouldn't understand how you go out. You know, you and one, you and a girl go out on a date. He, 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 he liked the crowd. Hey, who was his girlfriend? He didn't have a girlfriend right now. Okay. Alex, last time I talked to him was like two weeks ago, although we texted, he mm -hmm. was going to Greenville for a weekend. I, I mean, he had friends up there, girlfriend up there? No, no, we had a family, we had a family thing in oh. Greenville, and he came up on, he came up, Paul didn't play golf, he came up on Friday and stayed Saturday, and then he left to go to Charleston, and we were stayed another day to play golf. Oh. My, my niece on my wife's side is having a, a baby okay. and we went out for that <clears throat> and you said on monday maggie had a doctor's appointment in charleston none that we talked about this on monday do you call the doctor that she went to or for what the reason was maggie had a couple little things going on mm -hmm. and uh i i personally think she was going to see dr gordine but i'm not positive okay um I'm pretty sure that's who it was. I can find out yeah. specifically though. Her mom, her mom will know. Okay. And you said she and she and Buster were at the ball games all weekend. Yes. Was that with me? With you? And what what ball games? <laughs> Carolina, Carolina Regional. They didn't make it past those, did they? No. Okay. <clears throat> did Paul? Well, no. Paul was in Charleston, so he didn't hang out with y'all that weekend. No, sir. <laughs> time did Maggie get back home Monday night? It was it was after Paul and I had gone. She was not there when Paul and I left to go mess around. Okay. So, you know, it was sometime after that. So there was a point when, you know, 
she got back, we got back. When y'all got back from riding around and messing around on the farm, she, was she home or? Yes. Okay. The defendant told you that Maggie was home when they got back from riding around the property, is that correct? That is correct, yes sir. So, and I don't believe she'd been home too long when, when. And what's her car? That Mercedes that's out there? Yes, sir. Okay. And you said Bianca had prepared dinner that night. Yeah, Blanca. Blanca, Blanca. Cooked, cooked dinner that night because Maggie, Maggie cooks, you know, when the boys are home or she tries to really for me, but um, she wasn't going to be there that day. So she had Blanca cook a meal. How is your relationship with Maggie? Very good. As good as it could possibly be. I mean, you know, we yeah. had our issues, but wonderful. And I'm just trying to understand the family dynamic. I understand you got to do what yeah. you got to do. I promise. What was y'all's biggest arguments? Would, would what your biggest are the things that y'all would argue about the most what would they be over i mean we really didn't argue but the basic i'd say the really the only thing that caused any friction between us is she was always wanting us to go and i love her in-laws i mean they're wonderful people i love them to death she was always wanting to go there stay there a little longer than me and the boys wanted to stay that was really and and it really you know she'd get really She'd get ticked off. Yeah. You mean her family? You said yeah. her in-laws. You mean her family? I mean her family. Her yeah. I mean, we really didn't argue about much. We didn't have much to argue about. I mean, I'm sure there was an occasional thing that came up that we argued about, but mm -hmm. I can't tell you what it is. I can't think of it. <clears throat> sure she took care of me and the boys and I mean she did everything <clears throat> she did absolutely everything <clears throat> I'm sorry no no you have every right to do that <clears throat> kennels or anything? Did y'all do anything uh, up toward the kennels? I'm sure we did. You know, my, that's our main shop is, you know, right there. But, you know, I mean, we're normally in there for long times tinkering. And I will say that particular day, we, we did not tinker around there a bunch, you know? When y'all rode around the farm, what were y'all? Were y'all in a truck or? Well, we were actually in two trucks. We rode in one truck okay. and then we rode in uh, another truck some. One was the black one and one was the white one that was out there. Mr. Alec. Yes, sir. You, you 
you know, the other day when we were there, we, we came in and we were, we were talking with John a little bit. Sure. About, and and you, you obviously got a lot of, I say a lot, you said 20 or 25 uh, weapons. Yes, sir. And do you know kind of what you got as far as any kind of, uh, what kind of weapons you may have? I'm pretty much, yes, sir. Can, I know you might not run them all, but can, can you kind of run down what you, of course, what kind of what you have, what you got, you know, right there? That I own or that's in there now? That you own. All right. That I, I own. That's in there, you know, or wherever they're at. And, you know, I mean, Paul has guns scattered all over the place. So, you know, some of our guns aren't there. But, so you want to know all of them or you want to know what I think is in my house? Or what was in my house on Monday? Yeah, what was in your house? Let's start with what was in your house on Monday. Okay, whatever was in my house on Monday mm -hmm. is exactly what was there minus one shotgun that I got, that y'all got. Okay. <clears throat> no guns have been moved for, you know, there hadn't been any guns moved in and out of there other than when Paul was home. You know, when Paul came home, he, he would ride around and shoot hogs a lot. Um, what would he shoot hogs with? Most you know, of the time? I mean, primarily he would shoot them with Buster's gun. Because okay. Paul, Paul had a 300 blackout. Okay. And it got, you know, he says it got stolen. <clears throat> um, you know, and it's been gone for some time. What did he say Paul liked to do? To this repeating what the, the tape says. The jury can hear the tape and just stopping and repeating exactly what Mr. Murdoch says on the tape. Uh, this witness was actually present, and while there is a recording, he's also fair to uh, relate to the jury what he heard being present for that very conversation. I overrule the objection. Thank you. But anyway, and let me ask the question again. What did Mr. Murdoch tell you that Paul liked to do? Uh, ride around and shoot hogs. And what did Mr. Murdoch tell you that the weapon was he used to do that? He used his brother's 300 blackout. So he would use his brother's blackout uh, a lot of times. So Buster had a had also had a 300. I gave him both one. Okay. When was, when was that? Uh, About? Years ago. Okay. More than a year ago. More than, more than a year ago. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So, but he would do anything. Paul had this, um, you know, like a little light that I used um, that night. Paul would take that thing up to you know, by 308, and I mean, he, he, he was always rigging something. Um, <clears throat> you know, so. Going back. Sometimes shotguns, for, when he would go try to kill the hogs, cause you know, the piglets would be grouped up, but normally he would have a rifle when he went to shoot the pigs. So. All right, so going back to the guns, y'all want me to tell y'all what was in there? Or don't y'all, I mean, have an inventory? I, I video yeah. the, the thing. I didn't write down everything that you had. Um, I just took a, a random, just like a recording of what was on the gun rack or on the gun wall in the gun room um, that day. And there, probably, there are some more guns that aren't in that gun room, you know, I don't know how many, but okay. you know, like I do know there's a shotgun in my bedroom. And, and um, I think Miss uh, Katie, Agent Katie, bought with John and, and saw that one. Okay, and I imagine there's probably some in some other rooms. I know that. Um, I think it was the Nate. We have two two gun cases, one small one and one big one, and I moved some guns from the little case to the big case just because. You know, her mom and dad were in there, and 
I, I just took all the guns to the back room. But that's after the fact. Yeah, at this time, could I uh, request a brief uh, break? All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll take a break. <clears throat> For the record, we're uh, resuming with uh, the publishing of Stacey's 7243, and we're picking up at 36 minutes and 15 seconds in the video. I'm actually going to back it up 10 seconds just since we took a break. You know, her mom and dad were in there, and uh, I just took all the guns to the back room. <laughs> but that's after the fact. Were, were those guns, would those guns have been in the room, in the gun room when, when we came up there with John? I can't remember exactly when y'all came, but probably. I think okay. y'all came a little bit because it was a good while before y'all came. You had earlier uh, shown some body cam footage of your search of the gun room, is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, ultimately, that day on June 8, 2021, did agents also go to other areas of the, of the residence uh, to look for any other uh, firearms that fit the description or fit the caliber of the two weapons from the murder scene? Yes, sir, they did. And by two weapons, I should say two calibers from the murder scene? Yes, sir. And that would be 300 blackout and 12 gauge? That is correct. All right. So ultimately, these weapons that were seized, those are the only ones recovered matching those two calibers? That is calibers. correct. Right. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, it was yeah, probably was 2 o'clock or so that afternoon before we got here. <clears throat> now, did y'all keep any guns out at the uh, kennels? You didn't keep guns out there, but there were always guns out there. Okay. You know? Um, I mean, and I'm going to be honest with you, we were all a little bit bad about it, but Paul was the worst. You know, he was the worst. He, about, would, he would leave a gun out there? He would leave anything anywhere. And, you know, it was not unusual for there to be guns out there. Did y'all take the, um... But, the, like, I can tell you that, I mean, they told me that a 300 blackout was used in this. I, that 300 blackout, you know, it was... It was not out there. So y'all y'all didn't use that for target practice, or he didn't have it out there with him on Monday. No. Okay. No, that's right, because it was in the house. What did the defendant tell you about whether or not there was a 300 blackout present at the kennels on the night of the murders? He said it was not out there. So Paul Paul said that one um, was stolen or, or lost, and it was some time ago. Did was that reported anywhere? It wasn't officially reported because I wasn't totally convinced it was stolen. Okay. You know, as opposed to lost. But, I mean, you know, I mean, I, there were people told about it. Yeah. I know that I told John Beddingfield about it. Um, I know that I told some other local officers about it, you know, just in case it turned up in a drug thing. Okay but I didn't do an official report. Okay. <sighs> the, and the, the two that you, you bought for the boys, that each one of them had one, and the one Paul lost, is that the only ones that you, ever, you, you have? Well, I'm gonna tell you this. I thought we replaced, I thought that Paul got another one replaced, but Buster said we didn't, but I was certain that we did. <laughs> but, I mean, my memory is it's been gone for a substantial while too. Long pause. What did Alec Murdoch, the defendant over there, tell you about the third blackout? To his memory, it had been gone for a substantial amount of time, too. Do you remember anything about them as far as were they the same colors? They, they were identical except for colors. Okay. 
Who had did which one was Buster's? Buster's the one we still have. Paul's the one that lost his. Okay. <clears throat> what were the two colors? Black and tan. Buster's is black. Paul's was tan. Okay. okay. say you, you thought you replaced it after he lost it we I'm, another one, but, I'm all but, but buster says you didn't i believe that we did okay i mean there'll be a record of that won't it should be yes sir <clears throat> i know we replaced it You know, I wouldn't, I, yeah, I know we replaced it because I wouldn't replace it again. Maybe I just think that now, I don't know. But I'm certain we replaced it. <clears throat> Have you talked to um, CB Row since Monday or Tuesday? Yes, sir. Because I know we, we talked about what he had done on the farm. Have y'all, is he still employed? He's still employed because I got to have somebody keeping it clean. But I, I mean, I, I can't keep him. Mm. I mean, he's an idiot. Yeah. And, you know, I know I told you, I don't know why that story seemed important to me the other night. Yeah. Well, I really can't see CB Rowe doing, I, I just can't. I really do not believe that. Well, it, I mean, it, it's an odd story. It's um, a messed up story. And, you know, and, and I'm just... Being in law enforcement for so long and and working these type cases, and I don't know the Islington era, area, but talking to Collin and County and seeing the property and how isolated it is, Finding somebody that's just going to randomly come up there that late at night that doesn't know the property, you know, that's, so I, of course I have to look within and then start working my way out. So you feel like it's not random. You feel like it's intentional. I mean, planned. I, I don't know what to feel right now. And I, I, I hate to say that. I, I don't know what to feel right now. So do y'all have any good clues? All of the evidence that we collected um, Tuesday morning, and we collected additional evidence on Tuesday, on Tuesday afternoon. Um, they collected evidence at autopsy today. So we, we're, we're trying to put a rush on that to get an answer quick and and hoping that's going to tell us something. By evidence, I mean, is it things you think are going to be helpful? <laughs> well, I mean, the, like the shot shells out there, the, the, the casings, um, the DNA swabs that we took from the door handle to see if anybody touched the door handles, um, any other places that we think somebody may have touched while they were out there. Um, you know, we're trying to collect DNA from that and analyze that. Um, which at the conclusion of this, what, what I'm going to also ask is that we get a buckle swab, a DNA swab from you. No your, I mean, your DNA is going to be there, no. but we need to eliminate it when, when it, once it's developed. Um, so, you know, we don't need stuff. that unknown yeah. and it actually is right. a family member. Or no problem. Um, I mean, we, we have talked to <clears throat> close to a hundred people trying to track people down and we're still tracking people down. And that's why, you know, who, who um, um, Paul was with. I want to tell you one thing while I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Paul was really an incredibly intuitive little dude. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, he was like a little detective. And, I mean, Paul would, you know, he... he you know what yeah. I'm trying to say? Yeah. Which leads me to, let's go back to Paul right quick while we're on him. So we have his phone. Do you know his passcode? I don't. And I'm going to tell you this right now. There's a few people I can point you to. Yeah. But I can tell you that he was super, super, super 
secretive with that. I mean, cell phone. I asked his brother if he knew it. Did the, did the ones that they got the other day didn't when you, work? I, did y'all get any the other day? Not for Paul's phone. No. Okay. I know they got. I know they got Maggie's code. I know network. Maggie's. Yeah. And 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 it works, or it worked. Yeah. Uh, I I've not gotten it, but there's a lot of people out moving parts that you know may have gotten that information. So we'll follow up on it. If you you believe somebody gave us a code for Paul's, or a possible code for Paul's. Uh, you know, maybe it was Maggie's. I don't. Okay. But I'll find out. I, I will try to find out Paul's code. Okay. But it will surprise me greatly if somebody knows it. I mean, certainly, you know, talking about the investigation, certainly we, we're looking at every angle, trying to figure out what fits. Um, and we're, talk, we're talking to, you know, people that were involved in the boat case. We're talking, trying to track down people that Paul knew and were friends with. That's why I asked who he was in Charleston with. So we can go try and see if they might know something or try to figure something out. Um, we're trying to get into his phone um, to see if there's any information, see if he got like a direct threat from somebody there. Um, I mean, the people that are here are not the only ones working on this. Uh, we've got people out doing things right now. Thank you. Um, I mean, we're just, we're trying to pull everything in. Um, just the area, Islington, unfortunately, they don't, there's not a lot of people moving around. Um, I mean, I've got, got somebody looking at videos right now back at the office, coming through hours of videos that we've gone out and collected. Well, thank you all. Yeah. Very much. So. Mr. Allen. You don't have to call me, miss. You just I'm, call I'm me sorry. Alec. Thank you for that. Alex. <clears throat> when when y'all, well, when you and Paul got back to the house, Miss Maggie's there and y'all eat supper which has been prepared and you say you said you laid down and, and took a little nap and when you got up maggie and paul was gone or did they leave when you laid down or before I, laid down? I, I believe that I, i'm not i'm not sure but they weren't there when you woke up around the nine o'clock mark or so when when you made the call to maggie to to let her know you're going to your No, office. nobody was in that house when I, when I left. <laughs> so, I'm just trying to narrow that. The, the last time that Paul and, you saw Paul and Maggie's when y'all were eating supper. Yes, sir. Up. When you asked the defendant, when was the last time he saw Maggie and Paul. What did he tell you? When he was eating supper. Until you came back from your mom's and, yes, and found what you found. You got a, a, his, a Alex probably told you all this. He did check for a poll. Yes. Right. And, that, and that's why we want to do the DNA. Right. Uh, to to right. inspect the DNA. Right. 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 I don't know. Yes. When you. When you tried to turn Paul over, do you know if you tried to turn him like towards the kennels or away from the kennels uh, and his phone fell out? Away. I think I turned him away. Okay. Was he left-handed or right-handed? He was right-handed. Where did he normally keep his phone? I don't, I mean, usually in his hand. <laughs> mm. Most, most. But. The defendant was asked during this interview where Paul normally kept his phone. What did he say? Usually in his hand. 
I mean, mm-hmm. it was, you know, it was always on him. Pocket, hand, truck. <sighs> Where did Maggie carry her phone? Anywhere she could. Yes, sir. Did y'all get fingerprints on her phone? I haven't gotten that back yet. <clears throat> when the when when Paul's phone came out. Did you, you just pick it up and put it on, you know, place it back down on him or? You know, yeah, I did not try to open it or anything. You know, I just, I don't know how I had in my mind that I needed to not mess anything up. I had that, I had that, you know, Somehow, I had that presence of mind that I needed to not mess anything up. And so, I tried not to. And and you definitely saw a traumatic picture and uh, and I know it's not hard (laughs) or not not easy. I know it's hard. And sitting here talking today is, is tough. <laughs> it's just so bad. I did it so bad. When you asked the defendant about the traumatic picture that he saw of Paul and Maggie, what did he say? It's just so bad. I did him so bad. I did him so bad. Yes, sir. <laughs> He's such a good boy, too. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Go ahead. <clears throat> and but you know the little the little things that we've got. I understand. Is is necessary uh, so that we can we can get a little better picture as to to you know to what may have happened. <clears throat> Well, I just thank y'all for everything, you know. Yeah. My in-laws, my parents, my in-laws, I, I would like somebody to update me or my brother or somebody so that I can tell them as y'all discover things. Unless there's some reason y'all don't do that. Well, <clears throat> I mean, they just have so many questions. I understand. And I mean, they may even, well, no, they don't. Need to do well, that. I mean, how, I, I know Maggie's mother just had a knee replacement. How was their health overall other than that? You know, they're ailing a little bit. They're mm-hmm. getting on up there. Daddy has some neuropathy, but I mean, they're in good physical health. They, they're in good, uh, you know, their fortitude is good. They're just, you know, they're, they're just getting age on them, you yes, know. Sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> um, are are they in Somerville or are they at the house on Moselle? No, they didn't. They live in Somerville. Okay. But they're, I mean, they're here now. Oh, they're here in this house. No, they're in Moselle. Okay. Because um, I mean, I'll go by and and speak with them and meet with them. Um if you think that would help or... i think that would help a tremendous okay. amount if you would just be willing to just to sit down and let them i mean you know hearing from me and john marvin and danny and whoever what little tidbits y'all get i mm-hmm. just you know what i think it would give them peace of mind to know that y'all got a team of people out there on it yes sir and and you know just to really <clears throat> have something you know a tangible person instead of being told you got a contact number for for me? Yeah, I'm getting ready to get that. Okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs>
Send of the defense just so that that number is not broadcast. Yes, Your Honor, we agree. telling you, man, I, I, I've been the luckiest person in the world with in-laws. I mean, yeah. they are wonderful. Yeah, I tell people it's, I tell people all the time, it's my in-laws that I like, it's my wife's in-laws I don't. There you go. <laughs> let, me, let me grab a piece of paper, I'll be right back. Another contact number is given, I believe, with consent of the defense. Yes, Your Me to dig them up. And Dave, David, I'm, I'm gonna forward you this kind of. <clears throat> maybe I don't want to do it like that, but I can. Okay. Someone sent me Will's chaplain's um, you hold number that, please. Yeah. So we have um, a victim's advocate, Miss Marion Walker. Thank you. That's her cell number. Thank you. Here's some information for you on the back. Um, in the victim's advocate program, they, I mean, they help with different things. Um, I think more specifically, what would be more beneficial, especially for you and Buster, um, is some counseling down the road, grief counseling. You know, I do some assistant solicitor's work. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. you're, you're familiar I'm with familiar it. Familiar with the thing. But thank you so yes, much. Sir. I know the discussion about the victim's advocate. Uh, what did Mr. Barnard tell you about his career? That he did some uh, assistant solicitor's uh, 
work and he was familiar with the program. And again, what is an assistant solicitor? He's a prosecutor which prosecutes criminal offenses. Okay. Criminal prosecutor? Yes, sir. Um, I know y'all planned out the funeral today. When is the funeral? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yes, sir. Okay. Y'all have well, busy. The, the we're doing a service tomorrow. Um, Maggie and Paul aren't going to be ready until next week, so we're doing a service tomorrow, and then we're going to have a private family thing one day next week. Okay. okay. Uh, um. Are y'all doing anything tonight? Because I, I, I can run by and talk to Terry and Kennedy tonight. I think the better. sooner you can come yeah. and talk to them, the so the peace of mind that, that would really help them. Okay. That's convenient for you. So we're just, we're out at the house tonight, but, mm -hmm. um, and if for some reason they go back early because of the service tomorrow, um, that they... They may be staying tonight. They may not be. I'm not sure. Yeah. All, all of their cousins and family on the Branstetter side and the Hubbard side is coming in from Kentucky. Um, and so they may be going back to stay with them. Okay. Um, I'll find out and call you. Do I yeah. have, I think you called me. Yes, sir. He, uh... On the date of this interview on June 10th, 2021, to your knowledge, had there been another death in the family? At this point, it had not. Okay. Was there one not long after this? Yes, it was. And who died? Mr. Alex's father. And what was his name? Randolph. Um, Jim's got my number. Okay. I gave, I gave him I'll, my I'll, I'll find out okay. and call you in just a minute. Okay. okay. <sighs> <sighs> All right. Um, do you have any other questions that I might be able to answer right now that we hadn't gone over? Uh, no, sir. It's, I mean, it's, it's, as soon as I get something, um, and if it's okay with you, John Marvin asked me to go through him. Um, That's fine. So I'm not bothering you in case you're doing something. What time? What time is the service tomorrow? Twelve o'clock. Okay. Where is that going to be? Hampton. What at the church or? It's graveside. Okay. So if I if I get something around that time, I won't bother you. I'll I'll wait one one thirty and. If you get anything important, you can call me anytime. Okay. Anytime. Okay. <clears throat> Are y'all going to publicize the service, or is it just going to be for family and friends? No, sir. It's going to be you know it's going to be open, but I got. TC and those making sure there's no, I don't want any press anywhere near. Yeah. So, no, they, you know, they, they don't deserve to be near. They're going to, they're, they're going to make sure, you know, and the town of Hampton that, you know, there's no press. Okay. All right. Well, y'all got my numbers. Um, I think you say with that phone. It's gonna take a while. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go check on it. Y'all go back in the house. Uh, when it's done, I'll bring it to let you. Let me do this. Oh, the buckle. Yes. Buckle Let's quick. do the buckle swab right, right quick. Right. You can sit where you yeah. have Alex. And I'm, I'm gonna step out, but I got what? Up and oh, what? Down. The buckle. When there was a question asked about, do you think he's through with that phone? What were they talking about? Mr. Alex's phone, which he had given to us to uh, do a download on. And who was doing that download again? Uh, Dylan Hightower. And that was occurring while this interview was going on? Yes, sir. Now you're discussing the buckle swab, is that correct? That is correct, yes, sir. That's the, the buckle swab, oh, yeah. Oh, do I need to spit out my tobacco? Uh, yeah, it might be better. Yes, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, I'll, I'll get everything together. I'm doing the consent now. That's fine, I'm going to go ahead and... Where, where's your gloves at? You didn't grab gloves? Um, <laughs> I did not, but I know one of these vehicles has got gloves. I'm not in my... For the record, at this point in the video, we're at one hour and two minutes. 
What happens next? What, are, what if anything, are you about to do? I'm fixing the glove up. I'm going to uh, secure the cotton swabs, the sterile cotton swabs, and getting ready to do the uh, buckle swab. And who do you do the buckle swab of? On Alex Burdock. And the person you've been describing as Alex, the person you interviewed, do you see him in the courtroom here today? Yes, sir, I do. Can you identify him for the jury, He's please? He's sitting at the defense table with the, looks like navy blue blazer on. I'm going to show you real quick what's been marked as State's Exhibit 157 and see if you recognize that. Yes, sir, I do. All right, and can you tell the jury what that is? That is the uh, buckle swab which I collected from Mr. Alex Burdock. This time I would offer states at 157 into evidence, I believe, without objection. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. I'll do it. This is the buckle swab you took that day that's on the video? Yes, sir, it is. After that, where did that buckle swab go? It was turned over to a uh, crime scene and went to the lab for testing. And is that general practice with any sort of evidence like this to secure it from any tampering while it's turned over to crime scene? Yes, sir, it is. And the writing on the back of this, uh, this uh, evidence slip, whose writing is that? That would be David Owen, and he collected by Jeff Croft. been marked as states 218, states 219, states 220. And just generally see if you recognize those particular documents. Yes, sir, I do. And generally, what are those? Property receipts for items that were seized during the uh, searches of the, at the residence. That you previously described to this jury? Yes, sir. Firearms evidence and the like? That is correct. Your Honor, this time the state would move 218, 219, and 220 into evidence, I believe, without objection. No objection. So admit it there. All right, I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 156, and I'm going to get you to pull out your, uh, in fact, though, if the clerk, you all have a pair of scissors I can borrow real quick? All right, I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit uh, 156, 
And I'm going to ask you, if you could, to open the sealed pouch at the top so we can see what's inside, if we could, please. All right, now I'm going to um, ask you to hold on to that one. I ask you to return these back into the, that pouch if you could, please. I'm going to uh, put 156 on this particular exhibit, and can you tell the jury if you recognize that, what that is, please? That is the bugle swab that was collected from uh, Rogan Gibson. Who collected that buckle swab? I did. Did Rogan consent to that buckle swab? He did. And did you secure it from any tampering and turn it over to crime scene? Uh, yes, sir. Your Honor, at this time I would move uh, states 156 in evidence, I believe, without objection. No objections. You're admitted, or it's admitted without objection. I'm going to show you what's been marked as States 155 for identification at this time. See if you uh, recognize this particular item. Yes, sir, I do. And tell me generally what that is, please. It's a property receipt for the uh, buckle swab that was that we took, or I took, from uh, Mr. Alexander Murdoch. And that's the one from the, the video that been, has been played for the jury? Yes, sir, it is. At this time, Your Honor, I move States 155 into evidence, I believe, without objection. Okay. Submit it. First indulgence, one moment. Uh, direct examination of Special Agent, Senior Special Agent Craw. I think we will call it a day and start at 9.30 tomorrow morning. Please do not discuss the case. <laughs>